Investors, after a week packed with mixed earnings, from beats to disappointments, like Apple issuing a weak revenue outlook, on top of the Federal Reserve coming out more hawkishly, yet not upping the ante on interest rates, at least just yet, it is safe to say that we remain as investors in a state of flux. However, I'm here to say that there are still plenty of opportunities for long-term dividend investors who are seeking either dividend growth, sheer reliability, or both. To which I now have seven dividend stocks to uncover for all of you today. But as always, I want to actually get started before those dividend stock opportunities with a brief on all the need to know economic insights. So with that, let's dive right in. Now, I feel like at this point, a bit of a broken record because I have honestly been issuing warnings and calling for economic uncertainty for what feels like forever, as far back as I can remember. And no, I'm not dishing out these warnings to scare all of you as investors or just making clickbait here to grab views and likes, though I will say this, a like or two would be nice from all of you. I am issuing these warnings because the economic signs really just aren't adding up on my end. I mean, how are we still living in a thriving bull market-esque environment? Now, what do I mean by all that? Well, it just doesn't make any sense to me as to why tech, for example, is still running up, or it doesn't make any sense to me that consumers are just still spending. But I really think, well, what needs to be said here is there's an aloofness that's fueled by hope and optimism that everything will ultimately be okay. The reality is, well, what we choose to shrug off now is going to bite us in the behind later. Now, does that mean that I'm telling all of you to stop investing and begin to time the market? No, not at all, because that never works. But I am here to say that you should be specifically now focused on investments that you really wouldn't worry all too much about in a downfall, an economic downfall of any kind, whether it's now or in a decade from now. And if we just look back over the past week, first of all, we are in the midst of earnings season, which always arouses emotions in investors. And then we tend to see, well, choppier trading days. That's what we've been experiencing as of late. But the need to know economic insights on the week were actually Jerome Powell's words when he shared that the Federal Reserve didn't or wasn't rather going to raise interest rates again just yet, which I think is most likely due to the fragility of the market given the Middle East mayhem right now, because let's face it, inflation as of late didn't continue to trend down. It actually ticked up as of our latest CPI report. Yet we didn't get a tone out of the Federal Reserve that I would say is dovish. It was actually rather hawkish and alluding to future economic pains. You see, the reality is here that the mandate comes down to how robust the labor market is and remains. Of course, investors, I can tell you that the labor market is booming. So after Israel wipes out Hamas and Middle East peace is restored, could we get another interest rate hike? I certainly believe so based on all the data. After all, the Friday's latest employment report numbers once again did depict resiliency, and we are just not at the easing levels that the Federal Reserve needs to see to cool off and begin to reduce those interest rates. And honestly, I don't think we're going to be there for quite some time, which leaves consumers and businesses in a very interesting environment, one I'd like to call the survival of the fittest environment which is why it's important to find and invest into businesses that really have strong leadership or management teams, along with exceptional brand names, so great reputations, and most importantly, businesses that have little to no debt. Now, as I shared, there are plenty of stock opportunities out there. And a matter of fact, when there's heightened uncertainty in the streets, like right now, there are discounted dividend stock opportunities out there for literally anyone's taking. Whether you're looking for growth, reliability, or a two-in-one, which leads us to our first dividend stock, ExxonMobil, ticker symbol XOM which, as I'm sure you all know, is the world's largest gas and oil company that typically ebbs and flows depending on how strong the Green Revolution headlines are or the world events that are impacting crude prices. And of course, amidst all this Middle East unrest, you can bet there's a ripple effect that's being felt. But not only that, ExxonMobil also just came up quite short on their earnings. Though the refineries are stronger than ever before, there have been cutbacks by the Russians and the Saudis, to which the share price is now down year to date here as ExxonMobil is trading for $106 per share at a P ratio of just 10.5, though just months ago it was flirting with $120 per share. Now check this out. With a play like Exxon, growth over the long term is the norm, 
and we could see it so with over 76% worth of growth over the last decade. But what I truly enjoy seeing here when it comes to ExxonMobil is the insider buying activity that's been occurring as of late at the director level with over $69 million worth of shares being purchased. And of course, we're also seeing hedge funds who have also been scooping up more shares worth of ExxonMobil while they can to purchase over 5 million shares as of last quarter. Not to mention analysts who are forecasting over 21% worth of growth with the share price coming up to $129.28 per share. But given we are here for the dividends, have a look at some of these insights when it comes to ExxonMobil's dividend over 24 years worth of dividend growth with a reliable dividend yield coming in at 3.59%. Next up, a personal favorite of mine that I have mentioned before on the channel, but I think it's overlooked quite often it's omnicom ticker symbol omc now this is a marketing and advertising behemoth with a massive global footprint as it works with over 5,000 clients with clients that range from nike to mcdonald's nissan apple johnson and johnson and pepsi just to name a handful of them but trust me here omnicom is your moat worthy business but here's now the thing when it comes to omnicom when the economy isn't necessarily holding up all too well Businesses tend to cut back on their budgets and Omnicom always gets rocked. So it came without surprise here to see Omnicom fall amidst all of the craze in the market. We're seeing Omnicom down now nearly 7% on the year, trading for $74 per share at a P ratio of 10.8. However, if historical performance means anything for us investors, we have to look at Omnicom's 48% worth of growth over the last decade. And you better believe that we've seen a fair share of volatility throughout that period of time. So we got to take advantage of Omnicom right now being battered down as their clients reduce those ad spend budgets because eventually ad spend budgets will be back up and of course analysts believe because of that there's going to be 26 percent worth of upside coming to omnicom's way with a share price hitting 93 dollars and 75 cents per share but the best part about investing into omnicom and just allowing the economy to really rebound for their businesses to pick back up is omnicom's dividend to which we're going to get a lower growth rate here but that just means that we have a ton of reliability when it comes to Omnicom, and we're not going to get caught up in all of this volatility. Nonetheless, a solid 3.74% dividend yield. Now, just before I go any further and cover the next five dividend stocks, investors, I want to ask you to tap on that thumbs up button if and only if this video is delivering value to you as an investor. And by tapping on that thumbs up button, you're actually really just going to let me know that this is the content that you're looking for, and I'll keep pumping more content out just like this. With that, let's go ahead and cover everyone's favorite monthly paying dividend stock. We have Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which has really been put through the ringer as of late as Realty Income and a lot of other REITs are just experiencing a lot of pain because the Federal Reserve continues to crank up the interest rates, and that really is scaring investors away from REITs. But specifically, now when it comes to really income, we do see over 22% worth of declines year to date, trading for $47 per share. But have a look now at this REIT's growth rate over the last decade. We see 83% worth of growth. So the real question I think comes down to will really income recover? And in my opinion, yes. Why? Simple. It has a clean balance sheet and the security here is within their portfolio with over 13,000 plus properties that span across the United States and internationally as well with over 1,300 clients to lease those properties out. Now there's your moat. Now, as for analysts, we certainly see plenty of optimism here as well with the share price that's going to climb back up to $63.42 per share. That makes for 33% worth of upside, along with smart money moves that are already being made, not quite as aggressively just yet, but we certainly see firms like Maverick Capital, Atwater, and Chief Brock Investment Advisors building up their positions. And until any sort of rebound, dividend investors, you're going to be enjoying a monthly dividend with Realty Income. That's quite reliable here. We have over 25 Five years worth of a dividend track record at a 3.69% growth rate and a current dividend yield at 6.48%. Next up, Stanley Black & Decker, ticker symbol SWK, which truth be told was added to my personal portfolio moons ago when it first came tumbling down and bottomed out. Now, I said then this would be a buy and hold opportunity and I remained steadfast on my stance, but we can see that Stanley Black & Decker is currently trading for $80 per share, which is down over the last six months, but yet that is still up year to date here by over 14%. But let this time work some magic for you because over the last decade, Stanley Black & Decker's up over 32%. Now, why am I particularly bullish on Stanley Black? Well, simply put, it's just the largest tool manufacturer in the entire world. Not to mention their tool 
tools and brands are among the most popular from Dwalt and Craftsman to Stanley, all on the shelves of Lowe's and Home Depot, along with every single mom and pop home improvement retailer that's out there. Meaning supply and demand shifts may impact the business, but the business in and of itself won't be going out of business, if you will. And analysts certainly now agree with me on this thesis as they're expecting upside over 13% worth of it to start till we get some better market conditions. But that share price will rise to $95.29 per share, along with smart money moves that are being made more recently on Stanley Black & Decker that are patiently waiting now for the rebound. But if you're a dividend investor, which I think you all are, here's the magic of Stanley Black & Decker. It's a dividend king with over 54 years worth of dividend growth, a growth rate at 4.71% and a current dividend yield at 3.81%. Now, in regards to this next dividend stock opportunity, it's actually in the sector that I think has been hit pretty hard and been tanking lately, and that's the utility sector. But in regards to this specific opportunity, it's with the largest utility player in the game, Next Era Energy, ticker symbol NEE, to which we can see it's already down by over 29% on the year, trading for just $57 per share at a rather low PE ratio here of just 15.1, largely because of the spike in bond yield Yields, which ultimately makes investors want to seek more attractive options that are out there for income generation and different investments. And therefore, they leave behind the utility plays like Next Era Energy. But that's just now a gold find for all of us. Case in point here with a long term view on Next Era Energy, it's delivering through on 242% worth of growth. Now, that is quite impeccable. And if we look at more near term projections, analysts are forecasting $69.88 per share. And we also see 21% there worth of then upside. Now, now, on top of that, here we have plenty of insider activity to go off of as well with Next Air Energy at the director level, with close to a million dollars worth of shares being bought, and even hedge funds who have just been loading the boat on Next Air Energy with over 925,000 shares purchased last quarter. But now, here's where I get very excited about Next Air Energy. The company itself has been delivering through on dividends for over 27 years worth of dividend growth, the staggering 11.13% growth rate, and a strong dividend yield sitting at 3.21%. Now, next up, a dividend stock here that will surely feed your investment appetite. You're going to appreciate that dad pun in a moment, but quite literally, it's Darden Restaurants, ticker symbol DRI, which is a restaurant operator within the United States operating some of the most popularized restaurant chains in the States from Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse to the fancier Eddie Rees and the Capital Grills of the world. Either way, Darden Restaurants is now down over the last six months by a little over 2%, fell from $172 per share to just $144 per share with the current P ratio at 17.8, which all makes for what I think is a buying opportunity here in our current economic environment, given consumers are gonna be likely spending less. Businesses also have those expenses go up and trying to spend less. That's all pinching at Darden Restaurants. But longer term here, which is what we should all be looking into, we see Darden Restaurants with over 322% worth of growth. Now, as economic conditions cool, we're going to very likely see Darden hit or even just surpass analyst expectations here with that share price bouncing back up to $168 per share. It's over 16% worth of upside. And until then, how about just collecting on a 12.8% dividend growth rate while Darden also serves up a nice dividend yield here at 3.6%. And if you're not entirely full from Darden, then I just have one more for you to look into. It's Lowe's ticker symbol LOW, which is the largest home improvement retailer within in the United States, right alongside Home Depot. But that's similarly here now to Stanley Black & Decker's case, Lowe's has not necessarily been performing all too well on the year given the current economic environment. I mean, as of this recording, it's actually trading for $190 per share, which is down from a few months ago when it was trading for a little over $235 per share. And right now that PE ratio is below 20 at 18.5. Now, if you're gonna get invested into Lowe's, I want you to understand it's about the longer term here as we can see Lowe's has delivered through on over 357% worth of appreciation over the last decade. But what you may be asking yourself is what is it going to take for this comeback? And honestly, not much. Just a correction in the market, a reset in the housing market to get new construction and new home sales back up, along with consumers who are going to be back on the trendy DIY projects. And with that said, we'll then probably see that $246.23 forecasted share price being hit, which gives all of you dividend investors with 30% 
20% worth of upside. But in the meantime, you're going to have a hefty dividend to enjoy without worry given Lowe's 60 years worth of dividend growth with a current dividend growth rate at 19.29% at a current dividend yield of 2.31%. Now, investors, those are the seven dividend stocks that are worth your attention right now. But now I want to know your thoughts on any or all of them. So definitely go ahead and comment down below. And of course, investors, if you found this video insightful, you're going to love this one right here. But before you actually click away, do me a massive favor here, subscribe so you'll never miss another dividend stock idea. Oh, <laughs> no.